Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome to LMT YouTube channel. The Queen and Prince Harry had a four-hour heart-to-heart talk at Windsor Castle on Sunday about his future. She told him over lunch that he and Meghan will be welcomed back if they ever decide to rejoin the royals. A source said, hopefully if cleared the air. The Queen agreed to meet Harry for the extraordinary fireside chat to clear the air about his and Meghan's imminent royal departure after a request from the Duke. Harry's grandmother is believed to have ended the talk by saying, you are much loved and will always be welcomed back. Harry had discreetly strolled from his Frogmore cottage home in Windsor Home Park to the castle, where he and the Queen shared a light lunch and tea as they discussed his future. A royal source said, the Queen had a lot to talk to Harry about, and this was the ideal time for them to both say their piece. When Harry and Meghan announced they wanted to quit it all happened very quickly, and it was very stressful for all concerned. Sunday was the first time the Queen has had the chance to talk to Harry on his own and really find out what his plans are. It was a much more relaxed environment, and they were both able to speak their mind. Much loved grandson. The chat came amid reports that the Queen is very sad that she sees so little of Harry and Meghan's son Archie. The source added, it's fair to say she is very upset about him and Meghan leaving and she would love to see more of Archie, as would Prince Charles and the rest of the family. But she accepts at the moment that his mind is made up and he intends to live in North America. However, she also wanted to make it clear that the arrangement can only work if they do not exploit their royal status and try to cash in. That's why she wouldn't let them use the word royals it's for their foundation. The Queen is protecting the institution, and she is also aware of the cost of security. That is something that still needs to be resolved. But Harry is also a much-loved grandson, who she has always doted on. She made it very clear to him that he and Meghan are always able to come back if they change their minds and she will welcome them with open arms. Hopefully, the chat cleared the air and the way forward is looking more positive. But she wanted to make certain Harry knew there were limits and the whole setup is subject to a review after 12 months. Meghan is expected to fly into London in the next 48 hours for the couple's final royal jobs together for the foreseeable future. But Archie is not expected to join them. The nine-month-old will remain in Canada, looked after by a nanny and Meghan's best friend Jessica Mulroney. A new poll suggests 90% of the UK public believes the taxpayer should not pay for Harry and Meghan's round-the-clock protection if they live abroad. Canada will cease to pay the bill from the end of this month. Princess Diana's former police bodyguard Ken Wharf said, It will be sad for the Queen not to see her great-grandson, but in security terms, Archie is probably safer staying in Canada. Way forward looks more positive. What can't happen is for Harry and Meghan to lose their Scotland Yard officers and go private. It wouldn't be safe and they need protection more than ever. The solution might be for the Queen or Prince Charles to stump up some or all of the cost of protection and get it back to the taxpayer. This is a new situation, and new ideas are needed. Harry is thought to have arrived at the castle at around 1 p.m. on Sunday and had lunch of poached salmon and salad with the Queen. Their talks went on throughout the afternoon, with only Her Majesty's dogs as witnesses. They finished after a tea of scones and cucumber sandwiches. One source said Harry was seen leading deep in thought. Harry and Meghan will join William and Kate, the Fab Four as they had been known, the Queen, Charles and Camilla, at the Commonwealth Day service at Westminster Abbey next week. It will be Harry and Meghan's last duty as senior royals and the first time the couple have appeared with the family since their makes it plan in January. On Thursday, the pair will attend the Endeavour Fund Awards at Matching House in London, 
which recognizes the bravery and achievements of wounded and sick servicemen. The following day, Harry will be at the opening of a new Silverstone Motor Racing Museum with Lewis Hamilton. And on Saturday, Harry and Meghan are guests at the Royal Albert Hall for the Mountbatten Music Festival, which raises funds for Royal Marines charities. The following day, Meghan will take part in events to mark International Women's Day. Harry's aides say the couple will return regularly to the UK, with him attending the London Marathon in April as its patron. Both will be at the Invictus Games, the sporting event for wounded servicemen that Harry created at The Hague in the Netherlands in May. But one royal insider said tonight, the reality is that they will spend most of their time in Canada and the States. The Queen knows this, and that's why she wanted to make her feelings known at the weekend. She hopes a working compromise has been reached, but only time will tell. Royal photographer Arthur Edwards' analysis of Prince Harry. I think they'll be coming back more and more, and I think Harry will miss it. I think he will miss the life of the family. I mean, America's great, Canada's great, but it's not as great as here. And he knows that, and I think he'll be back. Another analysis. Prince Harry's final engagements are as an emotional times and bittersweet, according to Harry's friend. Prince Harry and Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, are finishing up some royal engagements before their official royal exit, something that the Duke's friend says is emotional for Harry. As he prepares to leave the royal family with Meghan and son Archie, Prince Harry has a final round of engagements that, according to his friend, are bittersweet. Prince Harry and Meghan's last engagement is quickly approaching. With the Sussexes due to quit their royal duties, there are a few lingering engagements on the calendar as they wrap things up. Prince Harry returned to the United Kingdom to attend a summit for his eco-friendly travel protect, then headed to a studio with John Bon Jovi to record a single for charity. Their last official engagement will be attending the Commonwealth Day service on March 9th, where they will reunite with Prince William and Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge. All eyes will be on the former's Fab Four, since so many rumors about tension and feuding swirled after the Sussexes announced they were leaving the royal family. Prince Harry is reportedly emotional about his engagements. As he's set to close this chapter of his life, it's not surprising to hear that Prince Harry is emotional as he finishes out the remaining calendar engagements. It's an emotional time for him in many ways, one of Prince Harry's friends shared with Vanity Fair. I think in many ways it's bittersweet. His friend continued, he's always wanted to have a regular life and to get away from the spotlight, and that's what he's doing, but it basically means walking away from his family. Harry's a loving, loyal guy, so that will be very hard for him. Prince Harry insisted on dropping his prince title. While attending the summit for his travelist travel venture, Prince Harry wanted those at the event just to call him Harry. Former Labour advisor Isa Hazarika said as she announced him, he's made it clear that we are all just to call him Harry. So ladies and gentlemen, please give a big, warm Spanish welcome to Harry. When I was introduced to him, I was a bit worried about what I should say, what were the right things, and he was no, very relaxed, and just said Harry, just call me Harry. And that's very much the spirit of how he wanted it at the event today, as Erika told we. Cuz Erika explained that Harry was not making a big deal about it, noting that just to say look, I want to move away from that pomp and circumstance, and I'm here as someone who is very passionate about this topic. He doesn't need a title. He is such a global figure now, he is recognizable all around the world, as Erika added. People know what he and his wife stand for, the causes they are passionate about. I think this is probably a nod to the future. Prince Harry noted in an Instagram post from the summit, 
We are a coalition of partners with a shared goal to transform the future of tourism and travel for everyone, to give people access to better information and ensure the future development of tourism positively supports the destinations that the industry relies on and that their communities depend on. So there you have it. That's all the news on Meghan and Prince Harry situation today. As always, thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and press that notification bell if you want to be notified of future videos. Thank you. Don't stop.